Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconer video. In this video, we're going to be talking about a really unique species of hawk called the variable hawk. Now the variable hawk is part of the buzzard eagle family, and that is the genus Geronoidus. Geronoidus is the it's buzzard eagles, so that consists of the white-tailed hawk, the hawk in this which is the variable hawk, and the black-chested buzzard eagle. Now all three of these are buzzard eagles, and I did a video explaining that covering all three species together. But this video, I've just cut out just the section about the variable hawk, and that's what we're going to see now. So let's look at this, and if you wanna see the whole long-form video, I'll have a description down below having a link where you can see the whole long-form video with all three species if you like. But with that, let's go ahead and jump in and learn about the variable hawk. The variable hawk uh, doesn't have a very good name. It's a it's a it's, it's a really cool species. It's another strikingly beautiful bird, and it is a buzzard eagle, which means um, that it it's not a true eagle, but it's from like a buzzard lineage that has gotten bigger. And of course, buzzards are not vultures. Buzzards are soaring hawks, like red-tailed hawks. And uh, this bird lives in the western coast of South America. And it lives from the Andean highlands to the Argentinian lowlands. So there's a wide range of difference in elevation, prey base, but it likes big open country. Now the species itself has a wingspan of 60 inches, which is about five feet. And the weight is pretty hefty. Their weight is uh, 1,800 grams, which is up to four pounds. So that's sizable that you're getting into a uh, small eagle size by that size. So this would be comparable to a very large ferruginous hawk in North America. And this is, so this is larger. And um, this, this species itself is uh, kind of in dispute. So the, the species is called a variable hawk for a reason. It has a ridiculously wide range of color morphs and to the point that there, they some people classify it as two separate species. The first one is the red-backed hawk, and which kind of speaks for itself. It's got this big old bright red back. And the other one is the puna hawk, which is the biggest of the subspecies of this species. The puna hawk is really rich, really dark colored, and really big. Um, and they're geographically different, but genetics seem to show that they're just subspecies of the same species. So again, normally these are just classified as, hey, these are all just the variable hawk. But again, some people in some parts of the world consider them separate. So if you hear about the red-backed hawk or the puna hawk, genetics seem to show these are subspecies of the same species. And uh, there's a wide range of pigment colors and including melanistic. There are some that are totally, totally dark. But the totally dark birds are different and separate from uh, the puna hawk, which is you know the kind of the rich, kind of more colored one, but not but not strictly melanistic. So this is another species where the wings are longer than the tail. This is a strange adaptation. We don't see this a lot with with uh, soaring birds, but you do see it with these. And so folded up, you can see those wing feathers going down all the way past the tail. And again, this is a bird that spends most of its time on the wing. Most of its time it's soaring around and gliding and just cruising and looking for food. Uh, it's interesting that I find this bird to be very comparable in many ways to the auger buzzard. The auger buzzard is an old world species and the auger buzzard is similar in size and weight. So I've, I've worked a little bit with auger buzzards and they're like, you're like, okay, this is similar to a red tail and you hold, you're like, no, this is bigger. This is like the size of a ferruginous hawk. But you also have similar uh, differences in color morphs. So the auger buzzards can be really white with a kind of, you know, white chested and kind of black on the head. They can be very dark and melanistic. They can have some really pretty reds there and they have a very similar way of life, uh, the way they hunt and, and where they live. And so I kind of think that the variable hawk is the kind of the new world version of the old world auger buzzard. And it's same thing too. You have the same kind of thing where when I was a kid, uh, the auger buzzard and the jackal buzzard um, were kind of considered, you know, they going back and forth on, are these the same species? Are these separate species? Are they subspecies the same? And I think currently now jackal buzzards and auger buzzards are now considered to be separate species. And it's kind of the same thing. You know, we could talk and, and consider a puna hawk 
and a red-backed hawk as being separate species. But genetics and human classification, nature doesn't care about it. Nature is just doing its thing. It's just trying to survive, trying to pass on its DNA. We try to understand how that works. And so we make definitions. We make taxonomic classifications so that we can talk with each other and we all know what each other is talking about and we can understand and be on the same page. So the, the habitat is very diverse in the species. They live above the tree line in the high mountains. They live on the Pacific coastal foothills. They live in the Patagonian steppes all the way down. Uh, they live in agricultural farms, just like you would expect a red-tailed hawk or a Swainson's hawk. They live in the human, humid pre-montane areas and they live in the lowland forests as well. So they have a very broad range, but they, they love open country and um, they, 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 they can just diversify. But again, the fact that they are bigger is important and is of interest because they're bigger than the white-tailed hawk, which is their closest cousin, and they're kind of trying to punch up. They're trying to diversify and being a little bigger can be good or bad. One of the good things about being bigger is you can maintain your body heat better. So when you get into high elevations with cold climates, if you eat something, you know, like 90% of your uh, uh, processing of digestive is going towards keeping you warm blooded. And the bigger you are, the more you can retain heat and the less has to go to that. So uh, that is part of the reason why they are so much bigger. Now the variable hawk will usually hunt from a soar, which most soaring hunters, you know, again, like a red-tailed hawk, if you're in America, it's probably the most common association. You normally don't see them soaring. You normally see them perching. They want to conserve energy and just sit around and look in a field and look for something to hunt. But not these guys. These guys like to hunt from a soar and that helps them having those extended primaries that are a lot longer for their size than one would expect. And so they normally do hunt from a soar. Small mammals are 90% of their prey, but they hunt some strange things. Uh, one of the things they hunt, and if you're not familiar with these species, these might kind of seem very odd and interesting. They like to hunt cabbies. Uh, they hunt tuco tucos. Got some fun names there. They hunt rabbits, of course. And they'll hunt mice. They'll hunt earthworms. Seems odd for a bird this size. They'll hunt grasshoppers. And they'll also hunt frogs, snakes, and lizards. So... This is a bird that has a very broad food range. Uh, and that's kind of strange. It takes them a while to get to adulthood. Like any member of this genus, they will, they, when, they, when they have their young, the eggs hatch. They have a large stick nest. They'll have one to three eggs. And it takes them three to five years to reach their adult colors, which again is not normal for a hawk this size. Normally you, ha you're, you're, you hatch, you couple months, you're full size, and then you have your baby colors for one year, then you molt and you molt into your adult colors. Not these guys, these guys take three to five years. And so you have all these different color phases along the way until they reach adulthood. And again, this is an attribute we normally see with eagles, but these are not eagles. These come from a buzzard lineage that are becoming eagle-like. And again, that is one of the things, but again, one of the things we think they're a small species getting bigger rather than a big species getting smaller is the fact that they lay so many eggs. You know, they'll lay up to three eggs. That's not normal for a large bird. For an eagle, they're laying usually only one, maybe two eggs. And usually if they lay two eggs, only one hatches. This is a bird that will lay three and occasionally four eggs. So this is a smaller bird that's in the process of getting bigger. It has such a wide range and such a wide range of colors from everything. I mean, they can be slate, they can be gray, they can be black, they can have tons of red on their back. They can be entirely red, they can be entirely gray. But again, uh, if you look at the patterning, if you look at the patterning on their chest, anywhere you see any of those little those little bars, you'll see that the patterning is the same of every member in this in this genus. You will see that they look just like a black-chested buzzard eagle. They look like a white-tailed hawk in the patterning. Now, the, the the thickness of the pigment can change, but the patterning seems to be the same in in all three members of the of this genus. So the variable hawk is a really cool species and a very successful species. And again. This is a bird about the size of a ferruginous hawk and, um, and, and very successful in all of its range.
Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about this species. The variable hawk really is a fascinating bird. And uh, again, it's got such a wide range of color morphs. It's pretty amazing. So I hope you enjoyed learning about it. If you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. It helps me keep this channel up and going. Let me know your questions and comments down below. And as always, happy hawking. Thank you.